Sustainability, Sustainable Development. You must have heard these words a lot over the last number of years. Well, at least I did. And maybe, just maybe, sometimes you were not totally clear as to what people really meant. So you may be familiar with the Brundtland definition, which is quite common. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Although this doesn't exactly tell us what to do on Monday morning, it's a very easy definition to understand and to communicate. There's another one, one that was created in the late 1980s, that is more of a scientific definition. It was created by a Swedish doctor, his name is Carl Henrik Robert, and he was frustrated with the lack of common language around sustainability. So he thought, what if we managed to get a group of scientists together and to agree on what sustainability means based on science and thermodynamics? and maybe that will lead to understanding what the root causes of unsustainability are. So that's what he did. He put together a group of 50 scientists, mathematicians, physicists, chemists, etc. And after 22 drafts, they agreed on several things. First, they agreed on the fact that we live in the biosphere. So the biosphere is this very thin layer at the surface of the Earth where life is possible. Proportionally speaking, it's as thin and fragile as the skin on an onion. And within this biosphere, there are plants and animals. Plants produce oxygen and food, which are consumed by the animals. And in return, the animals produce fertilizer and CO2, carbon dioxide, which are used by the plants. And we have a cycle that is well balanced. So this is a very quick cycle. We eat every day and we breathe every second, and, but it works really well. Then they agreed on the fact that this system, the biosphere, is open with respect to energy. So this means that energy from the sun comes in and radiations come out. And they also agreed on the fact that this system is closed with respect to matter. So maybe you remember this very famous phrase from Lavoisier that says nothing is created, nothing disappears, everything is only transformed. So this is also known as the first law of thermodynamics, the law of conservation, conservation of matter. And it means that except for a few satellites and meteorites, all the matter that was on Earth 4 billion years ago is still here today. It has changed form and the molecule reorganize themselves over time, but it is still the same matter. And the other thing that comes with this is that everything has a tendency to disperse. So for example, take an iPhone and wait for a million years, it's very likely that you will get a pile of dust. Take a pile of dust and wait for a million years, you will never get an iPhone. It works only in one direction. This is also known as the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. So if everything disperses all the time, how is it possible that we live here in such a beautiful world with beautiful nature, cities, people, flowers, and so on? Well, this is what photosynthesis does for us. Photosynthesis pays the bills. It enables plants to use the energy from the sun in order to reorganize matter and create new structure. So the group of scientists also agreed on the fact that there are other cycles, very slow geological cycles, that bring matter from the lithosphere, that we also call the earth crust, to the biosphere. And these cycles are, are also very well balanced. Some matter moves from the Earth's crust to the biosphere through things like volcano eruptions and weathering. And just about the same amount of matter goes back from the biosphere to the Earth's crust via things like mineralization and sedimentation. And all this is well balanced. 
These cycles take millions of years. They are very slow, unlike the previous ones, and they also work very well. So this is what the scientific community agreed upon. So this is the world we live in. And so we can ask the question, what is sustainability? Well, sustainability is actually the capacity of our human society to continue indefinitely within these natural cycles. And sustainable development would be a development towards this state of sustainability. So you may be thinking, well, this does not exactly tell us what to do on Monday morning either. Well, that's right, but it enabled the group of scientists to look at the things that we do to interfere with these natural cycles. And they found four root causes of unsustainability. And these are the four things that we need to stop doing to be sustainable.